All right, is the lighting going to make me look washed out? We're about to find out. Um, I'm reading over some of these tags and I'm finding out that um, a lot of them have almost identical questions and it's funny because some of them are like a year apart. Um, but I am going to do Tag Tuesday. Um, I do not have a tutorial set up for this week um, and it's possible I may end up uh, doing a tutorial next week. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'll go ahead and get started. Hmm. Okay, we're going to try this angle. And that sun's still coming in on this side. So this side's going to be washed out, I think. Okay, um, I found a tag... This was before I ever started doing... Oh, I'm off camera. Turn your sideways. There we go. I found a tag from Stitching May done um, October of 2013. I then found one from um, Lizard Lee done February... I'm sorry, October 2013. Then I found one from Lizard Lee from February of 2014 that she found with Michael Batt. But it turns out it's the exact same tag. <coughs> so this is going to be a year and a half old. And yeah, the questions were identical. So I'm going to do this one. Um, and I think that the stitchy tag has quite a few of these questions as well. So I may end up skipping those. Um, if not, I probably will not elaborate. I'll probably just be really brief. So, unless you guys just want to know double stuff, I don't <laughs> Okay, um, first question. How did you start, or, this, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, how did you start, or who introduced you to cross stitch? I think I've told this before. Um, I started cross stitching when I was 11 years old. Um, it was in elementary school. It was for a craft project that we were doing, um, and they gave us a piece of, it was either 11 or 14 count Ada. I'm thinking it was more of an 11 count. Um, it may have been 14, I don't remember. I have had this, I had this thing forever. Um, and I may still have it somewhere. I'm, I don't know who knows, but anyway. Um, it was on, they gave us a piece of cloth about this big, like a 4x4 four four square. And they taught you to start in the middle. Um, and it was of a cross. And you put the year underneath it. It was 1978. Um, I, can, I, can, I can see it vividly, the project. But anyway, um, then they had us form it around a cardboard disc. We had to glue it on, center it, glue it on top of a cardboard disc, cut around the disc, and then place it inside of one of those little plastic ornament hangers. Well, it's more like a little round picture hanger. It's a little plastic gold, little round. Um, and you took it and you stuffed it in, you stuck it in the back because the cardboard matched that. And then we glued felt onto the back of it. So we glued felt on the back of it first and cut around that. We stuck it in the frame, and then we took a little ribbon and glued with Elmer's glue a little ribbon up at the top, and it was supposed to be like a Christmas ornament, but uh, <coughs> that's who introduced me, my school. My, my school introduced me to cross stitch. Um, my stepmother later, um, I'm going to say two or three years later, was the day blur. She's the one that actually got me all of my supplies. My mother never supplied me. Uh, with my cross stitch stuff when I was younger, but she passed when I was in my uh, late 20s. Anyway, uh, do you have a favorite theme or designer? I like some of the DMC kits, but m my favorite designer, it's kind of hard. After watching everybody else, I've never stitched a Mirabilia. Um, I've been stitching Joan Elliott and didn't realize it was Joan Elliott because years ago we, we never really paid attention to designers. We just saw something pretty and bought the pattern or 
um, the book and just did it. I mean, I, I never really was introduced to designers. I have since discovered that um, I like Stony Creek. Um, I love Stony Creek, actually. I like a lot of their stuff. Um, and I'm sure there's quite a few out there, but I can't really think of what they are. Three, what floss brand do you use? Well, I've never used anything but DMC. Well, I take that back. I use DMC. I have tried JP Coats. I have tried Anchor. Um, and that was the go-to when I was younger. And then DMC started coming out with all these wonderful colors and readily available. That is what I have. Um, I th There's a new company that's come out with a lot of different flosses, but you can't get them individually. They come in kits or they come in bulk. And it's the Craft Artisy, I think is the name of it. But I think they're designing those more for um, friendship bracelets. But no, it's DMC and... Um, I was gifted some uh, Weeks Dye Works for my Storytime sampler, um, so I'll get a chance to try those. I've always wanted to try silks. I've always wanted to try hand-dyed flosses, um, and I will I will get to do that one day. Um, let's see, number four. What is your fabric of choice? <sighs> I'm going to say Ada for now because that's all I've ever worked on. Um, I now have some Lugana for my Storytime sampler, so I'm going to try on that. I found a scrap piece of material, and I want to say it was even weave. Um, I liked it. It took me a while to get used to counting, because right now I'm doing my Orange is the New Black Cats um, on 22, 2 over 2, and it took me a while to get used to counting. Actually, I think it's... 26 count. Anyway, um, to do the two over two, so I'm, I'm not really as familiar with even weave or um, linen, but Ada is just, it's it's my safety net. Ada is my safety net. Um, I do have quite a bit of the, the 14 and the 22 and some 18. Never tried 16, and I know some of you stitch on 16. Um, I did look on um, Ally Express, and they had some 16, so I may check on that. I prefer the 18 if I'm going to do Ada, um, but I'm, I'm really, I like the 22. It's just very, um, I still want to do the 2 over 1 on the 22, and it's very bulky, and I, I find the threads will push together, so anyway, my, yeah, my fabric of choice right now is my go-to is my Ada. Um, do you use a Needle threader or are you a floss licker? Uh, majority of the time I am a floss licker from days of when my mother taught me to sew because when you had to sew, when you had to thread that needle while it was on the machine, you cannot get, I mean you'd have to use the wire flosser and that's just so painstaking. Um, so you would lick it and stick it in the machine. So that's, that's my habit. Um, but if it if I don't think it's going to go through, or if it's more than two threads, I will pull out my needle threader. I don't like the wild needle threaders because they break too much. But I do use the, I don't have one handy here, it's across the room. Um, it's called La Lamar, I think is the brand. But it's, it's about this wide. It's got a big hook on one end and a little hook on the other end. I have like four of those. I love them. I've never broken one. Um, I've never bent one. Um, so yeah, I've used them anywhere. I've used them on 28, size so 28 needles, and all. Excuse me, all the way up to my needle point needles and my darning needles for my yarn. So, um, so yeah, I'm I'm kind of both, but majority of the time I'm a floss licker. What kind of stitching frame? What kind of stitching frame do you use? Uh, until I found floss tube, I was strictly hoops. Um, I have a stack of hoops like this big, all from, ranging from sizes this small to this big. I've, I'm just, I'm hoops. Um, I've got the wooden hoops and the plastic hoops and the spring hoops and the, which I need to get 
that's part of what I'm going to end up destashing. I may end up doing that Friday. I've got, just got way too many. I don't need them all. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but since YouTube, I have discovered Q-Snaps. So every time I got a 40% off coupon for Michaels, I got the Michaels brand. And I know what D-Stitcher's talking about as far as, um, or DD, the clamps breaking. The Michaels brand is very flimsy. I think they're discontinuing it because I noticed they put a lot of them on clearance. A lot of the uh, Q-Snap, their, their version of Q-Snaps on clearance. Um, which is, I think, loops and thread. I think it's loops and thread. But anyway, um, so yeah, I've got, uh, I want to say like four, five of them. I have five of them. Um, but that's what I prefer now because I like how you can get the tension on it and it, it doesn't budge. I love it. And then all you have to do is just tighten those little plastic sides. You don't have to, I mean, I just, I like that, yeah. Okay. Um, how many products projects have you finished? Well, way too many that I can ever count. Uh, it's got to be in the hundreds. Um, at least a hundred. I, I, I couldn't even tell you. Um, so we're going to skip that one. It's been too many years. And I never, I never kept track of it. I mean, you just didn't. Things are so different in the cross-stitch world than they were 20 years ago. I mean, just totally different. Um, how many completed works do you have currently displayed in your home? I have, I think I've got four in Matson's room. Four in Matson's room. One in the craft room, which that's fixing to be change. Um, I have one, two, three, four, and four in my room. So right now I have nine displayed in my house. Um, but that, no, ten. Ten, but I did not, the, the other one in my other bathroom, I did not do. A friend of mine did for me from Canada. Hi, Anne. I don't know if she watches my videos or not. Um, she sent it to me many, many years ago. We've been... I say best friends, but we, we've been friends since I was 16. We went to boarding school together, a Christian boarding school together, and we met and fell in love with each other, and we've been best friends ever since. Uh, just pick right up where we left off every time we talk. All right. Um, that was number eight. Number nine, do you do more stitching for gifts or keep them for yourself? Obviously, I do more for gifts, um, and, and, that's, and that's good. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. I still have the tickle, but other than that, I'm feeling a lot better, guys. Um, Ten, what is your favorite project or finish you are most proud of? I have two. One is a set of, a set of Old World Santas that I did for my stepmom. It was a piece that was going to be about this big, um, and it had six different versions of Santa. You had a nature version, you had a star spring, you had a, an American version, you had like a German version, I mean just very, they were just so beautiful. I got them out of a magazine and I think I still have it. I did them individually because she loved to decorate for Christmas when my dad was alive. Um, and I, I, I don't think she was as much into it since he passed, but um, I did those for her, I'll say like 15, 16 years ago, and it was the first time I'd ever worked with metallics, it was the first time I'd ever worked with doing beading, um, and I don't think I've done much of that since, but they turned out so beautiful, they, I mean, they were just, they were gorgeous. The other piece is, I call it one piece because it, it was originally one piece, but I broke it apart. Um, the other piece is the cross stitch I did of my mother. Um, I had just bought two of my cross stitch programs. I bought, because I couldn't decide which one I really liked. So this was back in 2002. I bought PC Stitch and Pattern Maker. I prefer Pattern Maker. Um, and the reason why is because I would take the photograph, okay, let me back up. Her photograph was, it was a, um, a wallet size photo. Um, I scanned it into a scanner bed, transposed it, 
and then put it into my pro my uh, pattern maker program. And the pattern is I think you've probably seen it on my other. I don't have it handy. Um, one of these days I'm going to frame it. <laughs> I transposed it into a, a cross stitch. Um, I did it on. I did it on 14 count, maybe 18. But anyway, I transposed it into um, a, a portrait about, about yay big. But I was just in love with that thing. So what I did was I made, um, I went to the copy place and I made um, um, professional copies and gave one to each of my sisters. I have two sisters. And I sent one to my grandmother. My grandmother showed it to my aunt, who her and her husband are have well they're retired now, but they were professional photographers ever since I can remember. And they thought that it was a blow up and that it was pixelated. And I was like, oh no, 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 no. I stitched that and I'm very proud of stitching that because it took me forever. I had just had surgery. Um and that was my that was my release from the pain was to sit and stitch because I was pretty much bedridden for say two weeks three weeks um, major major surgery I might tell you about it one day it was a fail but I might tell you about it one day um anyway so that was my uh, I and they didn't believe me so <laughs> So it's like because they had never heard of taking a portrait and turning it into a cross stitch. So when we had our family reunion, uh oh, when we had our family reunion, I went ahead and um, I brought everything with me and some other ones that I had done of my niece, um, and said, "See, this is cross stitch." Well, they finally believed me, but anyway, that she was talk They were talking about taking it and resizing it, and uh, so it wouldn't look so pixelated. I was like, "No, I worked hard for that. That's that's me. That's not." computer generated I did that um, but anyway so yeah that that's my that's the one I'm most proud of uh, 11 what has been your least favorite or worst experience while stitching frogging I hate the frog I, I like it that they talk about Miss Piggy coming and getting the frog I don't uh, know um, I hate frogging black on white um, any black that I have to frog of DMC because it it fuzzes it gets little fuzzies everywhere so I found a solution to that if you will take masking tape or any tape wrap it backwards around your hand so that you've got a sticky surface and after you have frogged take the tape and mat it on your material and it, it, it awesome it takes all the little fuzzies away I do it on the front and the back so that when you stitch over it it won't um, come through and it won't stay with your other thread but awesome tip guys use tape it's wonderful um, I think somebody had talked about using a lint roller I've never used a lint roller and that makes me kind of nervous because um, I guess it would be the con same concept but what I do with the tape is I wrap it around my hand several times and I mat it on there and get it all off and then I turn it while it's on my hand because it's going to be it's loose on your hand and do it again on both sides but awesome awesome uh, but yeah that's 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 actually the worst experience I think I've ever had is just the, the black with the froggy. Um, oh, no. I've got another one. Spilt coffee. That's why when I told you I, I keep my drink on, on one side over here and all my craft supplies and stitching over here. Um, I did accidentally spill coffee. I think the cat had knocked it over or something because I had... I wasn't drinking or eating while I was stitching, but I had put my stitching on a platform below. I have a craft, I call it my pink table, but it's actually a, a bin with drawers that I keep a lot of my cross stitch stuff in. So I had it sitting down on a second level of my bin. <coughs> I think the cat jumped up and accidentally knocked over my coffee or whatever it was. Um, luckily it was a uh, cream Ada at the time, so it... it didn't stain it too bad but unless you knew what it was you really didn't couldn't tell but I knew what it was and it freaked me out okay so that would have to be yeah that would have to be the the worst experience okay um 12 what do you love and what do you hate about cross stitch I love 
everything about cross stitch. Um, as far as like, what do I hate about cross stitch? Let's see. I can't. What do I hate about cross stitch? Oh, I hate fractionals. I hate doing fractional stitches. Um, three quarter stitches on Ada. That that just. Ugh. So that was one thing I did like about when I did work on the. Um, on the two over two over two on the that I'm working with the fractions I, I don't like the fractionals with the Ada um, <coughs> I don't even mind back stitching I, I prefer <coughs> I like back stitching because I like the result um, I try to avoid it if I can but I, I do like it I do like it um, but yeah that it would be fractionals I think that's the only thing that I hate about cross stitching other than I have no resources here, hardly at all, um, except for your general stuff that Hobby Lobby carries in patterns. Michaels doesn't even carry patterns anymore for us here that I can think of. I don't. I haven't found any unless they've got it stashed somewhere, and, and I'm in there at least. Well, not anymore. Um, I'm, I used to be in there at least once or twice every month, but. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, um, have you ever introduced anyone else to cross stitch? Yes, my soon to be ex husband, long story, uh, baby daddy. <laughs> she, <laughs> he saw me doing it, he thought it was fascinating, and he's constantly sending me pictures. Can you turn this into a pattern? Can you turn this into a pattern? Um, and a lot of his very intricate stuff that would probably be bigger than any hate you've ever seen. Uh, it would be, it would be, uh, uh, to get the detail that he needs, it'd have to be really huge. But anyway, um, yeah, I taught him. He loved it. And he's a truck driver, comes into town and, and visits my daughter every, I think, two or three months. Um, last time was a six month stretch, but whenever he comes in, he has a list. He goes to Michael's and, he can afford it. He'll spend anywhere from eighty to a hundred dollars in floss. That's how much he likes to stitch. Now, granted, um, I don't know if you know he does it in this truck on the road. I don't know if he actually does it all the time or what. I don't ask. I don't care. That's terrible. I don't. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I taught my ex-husband how to. How to stitch. Um, tried to teach my daughter. She got kind of bored with it and discovered perler beads, which is cross stitching without a needle. It's you follow a pattern of the little pixels and you put the little colors down, but mommy has to iron it to melt them all together. Um, so I'm thinking because she's so interested in that, maybe I can get her into cross stitching more because I got to will somebody my stash. <laughs> somebody else was talking about that as well. Um, putting people in their will, um, and I can't think of her name, that's so terrible. I have her face vividly in my mind because Stitch, Stitch, she just recently changed her name, Stitchography, but it, I, I can't, her name just leaves me, I'm, I'm just brain dead today. Um, but if you get a chance, go check her out, Nan, no. What is her name? Kate? Is it Kate? No, it's not Kate. Anyway, cute kids. Um, and her daughter is just like mine. I mean, I'm not kidding. When she came on camera, I was like, "That is Maddie, that is you. She started cracking up. She goes, that is me, isn't it? It's just like me. I said, yeah, it, there's, there are two peas in a pot, I'm telling you. Um, okay, have you heard? Okay, what is your first project and did you finish it? If not, what was your first finish? Okay, well, I discussed that on how did you start or introduce you to cross stitch. It was the, the cross and the little. I thought I did. <coughs> I thought I have remembered that we turned them into um, covers for mason jars with the ribbons, but that was later. But, yeah, that was my actual first one was the cross. But, yeah, it was a finish. Um... How do you store your cross stitch floss? I think I can't remember if I showed you guys or not. I I have them in the floss bins. I have 
four. I used to have six. Um, and then as I used them, I reduced it down because I find that there are quite a few in the DMC spectrum that are not readily used in patterns. I do have one of each now. Um, and what I did was the I used to bobinate everything. Um, I now have a big bag that I keep with individual baggies with the numbers like 200 to 300. So that's how I store my floss. I only have one thing of Krennic, so it's kind of like stuck and tacked in there. So that's it. Um, this has been long enough. Um, I've got to get some creative juices flowing. Um, I did uh, two, three custom patterns over the weekend. People who wanted some quotes. One of them is the Serenity Prayer. If you're interested, um, it is now up at my shop. Um, I had never thought about doing it. Somebody had asked me if I could. And um, I played around with some of my fonts, and um, I actually had to painstakingly click each little tiny X to get one of my fonts, actually the, ma the majority of my fonts, correctly. Um, and let me tell you something. Putting backstitch manually on this program is a pain in my patoot. This is a time that I wish I had a touch screen, because if I had a touch screen, it would make my life so much easier. Um, and that may be a future possibility to make my life easier, but in the meantime, but anyway, um, Serenity Prayer, got it finished, it turned out really great, I'm, I'm very pleased with it, so I went ahead and put it up in my shop, uh, but other than that, I guess that's it, um, I am doing a Game of Thrones marathon right now, um, so I will be back next Tuesday. I will be doing the Joy of Stitching Tag by Cat Crazy Creations, which is Sonya. Um, I will be doing Cindy's Unnormal Tag, a Stitch in Time's January Tag, um, and Tool Time Tag. And then I'm going to save the big one by itself, which is the Pam's Stitching Style Tag, Stitching Style Tag for another time. So anyway, I did all this in one take. I'm kind of impressed. Can y'all see my food over here? <laughs> I've been eating my lunch for three hours. <laughs> anyway, I'm feeling better. I just want to say thank you to all you guys that left the beautiful comments about hoping I'd feel better and the well wishes. I really appreciate that. Um, it's been great. Um, have a job prospect yesterday. And um, I've got a couple places I'm going to go hit tomorrow. So wish me luck. Um, as I know you will, and I will see you guys at the book review. Yeah. Peace out. Now we got to push the camera.